Microphone's working. Do you hear me? Yeah. W one, okay, two, one, two. Fine. Yeah, fine. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are very happy and very proud to be presenting this seminar in, I think, by far the best pinball show in on earth. Yeah, we have called this presentation Suggestions in Launching a Successful Pinball Campaign. And it's very important that you read on the bottom that it says what end users expect. So this is not going to be like a manual on how to launch a PMO machine. We are not company, so probably they know much better. But we believe that as end users, there's a couple of things, ideas, criteria, suggestions that we would like that those companies, all of them, do. Yeah, And we've been preparing this for a couple of months. And yeah, maybe we were too early because a few things happen in the meanwhile. But OK, let's, m let's move on. Uh, one second. It's moving. Screen. Now, okay. So let me put my glasses because <laughs> I think I can see this. Okay. So th wh why this seminar? Okay. The the point here is that when when a new machine comes to the market, obviously and normally, uh, the criteria that we see is what's the theme, what's the code, what's the art, the gameplay, the layout, the lights, the sound, etc. And the point is that we would like as end users that companies they do it, they don't do it, they do it partially. They go beyond this criteria. Yeah, and and we want, as I said, to put some suggestions on how they could do these things a little bit better or better than they do right now um, before, during, and after that launch, independent of the machine itself. Yeah, We believe that these measures or suggestions, they compared to what a machine costs, of course, manufacturing it and designing it, they are way, way lower. I mean, they are not low cost, but they are they are low effort or low cost compared to the machine itself. But they have a high influence on the public perception on the machine, but also on, on the company, you know, because sometimes it's not only the machine. A new machine comes, and maybe it's the first machine of a new company that's been created. So it's if that launch is not perfect, not the machine, but the presentation of it, the launching, the explaining and all that you'll see right now could affect the, the 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 perception of the public on that machine and the company okay so we say that what we want is to have a premium lunch in line with one second <laughs> this is company no, there okay is yeah. yeah it's okay so we want a premium lunch in line with a premium product so mm, pinball machines are great but sometimes the launches are like not in line in quality or the way they do it with the machine itself. Disclaimer is easy, is because we thought about this like really months ago, and we started collecting ideas from different corners. And during this time, the companies, some of them, I would say, especially Stern, I would say, they started to do things that you will see in this presentation, but it's good because it's something that, okay, we thought it was important and they are doing. <coughs> we'll see later, technical videos, stuff like that, okay? But just a little disclaimer that maybe you go like, oh, but they're doing this already. But maybe not all of them are doing it. Maybe just Stern or a few companies. Okay, stopping here. Let me click because it doesn't work. Okay, let's present ourselves first. Okay, so I start, I'm Oscar uh, from Barcelona, Spain, and I will be speaking about the pre-launch activities or suggestions, and I'm a pinball collector. I've been in this expo five times already, and this is my fourth speech. I guess this has to do that because I'm kind of friends with Rob, and I'm so happy to share this, this passion for pinball with him, and, and that's basically it. I'm let you present you guys personally. Robert. Yeah, well, I'm Robert. I'm also a Spanish enthusiast, and I've been working with with Oscar for a year and a half now in our pinball brand. And our we are Pincaster. We got a YouTube channel, an Instagram channel, in which we are trying to to spread the hobby to all the Spanish speakers. Uh, this is my third year here, here third Expo, but this is my first seminar, so I'll try to do my best. Hi, my name is Nick. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I'm a German American. I live in Germany. I uh, started collecting pinballs about a good almost two years ago. And uh, as you can tell from the picture, my job takes me a lot of places, uh, mainly within Europe, but also throughout, throughout the world. And since then, I've seen a little over 100 places, uh, pinball locations all over the world. So, um, yeah, I've been playing ever <coughs> since. And I uh, got connected with these two gentlemen uh, mm. through Rob, actually. Nice. Very nice. So we're sharing this yep. two countries. <laughs> Great. So the next slide is a little bit like trying to ask you, you know, we don't have a lot of people, but still the question stays, which is just raise your hands. How many of you believe companies could do, let's say, even better? I don't want to say better, but even better when launching a new PMO machine. How many of you? So the sample is, is pretty good. So it's uh, 
a, a lot a lot of you are raising the hand and I, and I would say that this is an important matter yeah this is why we do the seminar okay so let me start with my part I'm on the pre-launch um, of course pre-launch as, as this is said it mm, you have not seen probably the machine the final product that comes to the market but there is a lot you can do upfront actually months before the machine comes to the market to to prepare that lunch in a way yeah let's 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 see some examples that we thought about so for example and this is something at, on the disclaimer side because we know that recently stern sent a questionnaire via mail or i don't think through the insider connected asking the users for what they think about themes what they like what they would like to be developed and stuff like that this was the idea we thought about this like maybe one year ago but in meanwhile of course this came which is fine yeah so i think that first thing the companies need to do way up from the launching of the machines is to ask the users that we, ha we are many pinball players in the world and i and i believe now we have um and it's not only asking but how do you ask for example i made a mock-up here imagine you are at home playing your jaws pinball machine and on the screen through these insider connected facilities and so on you get you get a poll or a question like would you like to answer a poll between games yeah, fine. And then you can go into a certain menu and just with the flipper buttons and the start button, clicking some multiple choice questions and asking about things, what you like, exactly the kind of survey that they did recently. But probably it would be even nicer to do it on the PMO machine itself, which I'm sure they could do. But the, the bottom line here is that, that ask the people, because it's important that sometimes some of the things that come out, I go like, who really likes this or maybe it's a couple of people but it's not mainstream so there's so much we one day made a list of potential themes and mm -hmm. there's so much still to do and and i know they're not easy they're expensive and so on but i think that this comes partially because they don't ask the people what they would really like first point second point which is i i can understand companies why they don't do that but they would also have advantages let, let me explain um they don't let me put my glasses on. So the thing is that unlike in gaming, for example, gaming industry or cinema or many other product industries, things are uh, explained or confirmed like months before, even years before. I'm not saying they have to tell two years up front what are the themes they're going to launch. But I would say like, for example, one year explaining what themes they are going to come into the market and probably even in which order, it would, it would help the users a lot to plan themselves because we are totally extremely theme related to the pinball machines actually. It's very hard for a pinball machine to be successful in a blockbuster if it doesn't have a very strong theme behind, yeah? And the perks of doing this from the company side, because I can understand that they go like, yeah, but this is something that's secret or maybe whatever, I don't know. Or maybe they just don't want because they want a fast release, catch the attention, I don't know. But this would give them time to prepare that launch in with things that I will tell you right now. Things like, for example, imagine that six months before or one month before, uh, one year before, you get to know what, I'm just saying, Stern is gonna do for the next one or two years, yeah? These companies could do one thing that sometimes or many times don't do, which is explain the theme properly. Because not everyone knows everything about a certain theme. You expect yeah, X-Men to be, for example, very well-known worldwide, but me, I know X-Men, but I don't know details on the characters or when was it launched, if there was a comic or a movie behind. There's a lot of details that help you sell and explain the theme way before you get the physical machine in your hands. Yeah, I'm just saying one example. It can be a movie, it can be a band, it can be so many themes, you know, that, that could be explained way before. If you tell the themes way before, but if you tell them like, confirm them like one week before, then you don't have physical time to explain them well. The next thing is not only the theme behind and how important it is worldwide, how many followers, whatever, is the next point, which is the extent of that theme. So once you've said, imagine, for example, you launch a Star Wars pinball or whatever, but Star Wars can be a trilogy, a movie, nine movies, which characters, which assets, which characters, whatever, there's so much. And this is something that, in our opinion, linked to the first two, two points that the companies could and should do. You know, explain us exactly what, what's the extent of the, of the theme behind. I think as end users, we would appreciate that. It's what I'm saying. Not that they wanna do it, but we are just manifesting. And the last point is, again, if you have time to think, you can plan also the lunch properly in terms of quality, for example. We, we, sometimes when you rush things, the quality of the videos are not the perfect one. Maybe you are not using the right channels. 
um, in time, you can plan it well. You can find people in-house and out-house, like, for example, YouTubers, Instagrammers, I don't know, co communication companies, whatever, to really prepare the proper uh, PR material for that launch. Yeah? So we believe that pre-launch, before seeing, following this, there could be more, of course, yeah? but these are the thing, th five things that we thought that at pre-launch would be nice to be considered. And now we move to the next part, which is the launch itself. Robert, all yours. The coming movie. Yeah, yeah, I can, <laughs> put, it here, please. I can put it here. So thank you, Oscar, for this big, big approach to the next uh, phase, which is the, the launch. Uh, so the day has finally arrived. Uh, the day has finally arrived. The final announcement to the public. There are tons of ways of, of doing it, but the way you wait depends on the things that, that came before the the launch, I mean the, the leak images, the, the video leaks, and as enthusiasts here we have some, some points that we thought that would be interesting to, to get through them, so let's go. Okay, so first point, the promo video has to be top notch, okay? So when we can consider that a pinball machine has been released? Uh, on well, my opinion, when the promo video is released, we can mark in the, in the calendar that the Pinball machine has been released. Okay, so do you remember here, as you can see here, the Twilight Zone promo video, guys? So in that video, we had apart from the from the night is magic that was awesome. Uh, you you remember the music, you remember the voice, the effects, introducing the team, the spirit, all all that got you into the into the university the universe of the of the pin. Okay, and then when when you're done with that video, that was like a seven or eight minute video. Uh, you want some more, and you were able to think that if you are enough, or that was enough to to get a pinball. And right now we are in the in the digital in the digital era, so we expect it to be to be huge. You expect to to be impressive, but it's not always like like this. Okay, so we think that you need to impact the the audience, even if they are not with the with the theme, making the user know with just one video that if they are interested in it and what the real experience is going is going to be is okay and you can be concerned and our main concern is that the, maybe the video is bad or it's not that expected this will create a, a bad mood in the players and and also the buyers so let's continue with the next one so Next point, clear features on each model. We want details on features of each type. So as, as you know, as, as you can imagine, when we see a, a launch video, the, the version we are, we are seeing is the best one, the most loaded one, etc., etc. So we want clear features of all versions. Imagine that I'm not interested in the, in the most loaded one, and I have to wait for, for a week, or even I have to ask my, my distros or, or my vendors if that machine is including the, the topper or if that machine is going to include the side rails, etc., etc. So why not sewing all of them at once? Or why not sewing all the features at once? Why not spending five or six minutes six minutes for for each of the of the models and not also the not only the the big one? Uh, some of the other people is out of the buying queue because you are just waiting for for some details, okay? Or even you have to ask, as I said, your distro if if you can get the full info. Uh, info generating hype is good, but we want on the info, uh, all the info as as soon as possible. So why not sew in everything and be and be clear as soon as as possible? Not spending the whole week waiting for Friday for getting the details or for certain version. So now, third point, the making of video or the time of launch. All companies, all pinballs can't wait. Okay, so I love the making of videos. I have to be to be clear. Why don't enjoy them at the time of the launch? Why should be waiting for a week or a month or two months to see the making of video? This kind of footage is, is being recorded while the machine is being developed, right? Or the machine is being built. So. I guess it's more more interesting to to watch this kind of footage while we, you are you know feeling and continue with the momentum when when you're watching or you're living in your in your flesh uh, the pinball the pinball machine release. So 
uh, it's impressive to to see the evolution of the machine you love, uh, the way they follow, the way they they built it, and sometimes the video appear uh, when other machines are are enjoying their moment. For example, uh, they are releasing a, a new model, and then they, in that week they release the, the making of video of the previous of the previous machine, or even they are not making this video, or and they are making tours for for some people, showing them how how they work, how they build the the machines, how they build the code. Why not showing everybody how they work, how they hard work, because. Let's, let's be honest, it's, it's really difficult to get a, a good pin model done or or well developed. So why not show everybody how how hard you've 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 been you've been doing your job? So sometimes this never happens. So from here let's let's make make enough videos for, for everyone. Okay, let me change this. So now we're in next point talking about the the gameplay and mail rules video, how deep we expect the machine to be. So there are tons of things to, to show when you, you're releasing a PIMO machine and you're getting into the theme and into the, the PIMO machine. You have to think in the correct order to, to spread the, the information. Uh, the rules matrix are, are usually available when the, the PIMO has been released, okay? But sometimes you have to wait or you have to look for some videos and try to get uh, how everything is done, how to get some modes, how to activate multi balls, or you have to go to YouTube or to set some some expo or some party that has been some launch party and watch other YouTubers or someone playing the machine and saying, ah, you have to to shut the ramp to to enable this mode, etc., etc. Do you remember, guys, the um, the Jurassic Park uh, gameplay video that Keith we did when, when you were done? you knew everything about the machines he starts uh, started playing and said okay you have to shoot here here and you got this mode then you have to shoot here here and you got this mode and when he was done you know exactly everything about a little bit about the people machine and you knew what you had to do in order to get all the modes uh, unblocked so uh, in this case there are tons of ways to to know the the rules okay and this is getting me to to the next point so So the next point is going to be rules chart, rule chart as graphical lens to understand JGPS way to go. So there are, there are tons of ways uh, of knowing the rules. Uh, so there are some people that love to, to play and discover everything by their own, uh, get into a rules major that in the in the manufacturer's website, or as as me, I'm a lazy player and I prefer go to to my friend and ask him, okay, can you tell me the basics and how to to play the game? <laughs> So, and, and for us, it's really easy to, to go to, to get a graphic uh, mode, to get a graphic way, an easiest way to, to get everything done. And there are some sort of rules chart as uh, Jersey Jacks has been doing with, with Avatar in, in a big picture in which you, you, you find it really easy to go where, where you want to go. For example, you want to unlock a, a multi-ball, you see it in the in the big image and you know what you have to shoot, where you gotta go and what you have to, to unlock to to get it done. So people that are not into people but also are impressed that the machines got such kind of, of rules, okay? And why not have them print uh, for, for everyone or somehow get them easy to, to see and understand because for example, sometimes I'm playing some machines and I don't know how to get a mode, a mode ball, I have to take my phone to get to Google how to get and this mode unlock while my machine is and I find it uh, really more easy to, to get in a picture to get it here and check this and okay I have to do this and I think it's more more easy to for everyone. So this one which I think is one of the most interesting parts the brochures longer detail explain theme plus collecting them is cool. So for me, as I said before, with the making of videos, I love brochures. I, I love reading them, I love collecting them, but sometimes I feel that they are missing some important information, okay? So for example, um, do you remember those VHS tapes that we used to, to watch in, in the 90s in which you, you, you read some like 10 or 20 lines in which you, you were able to know what's the movie about, what's the main, you know, the main purpose of, of of that movie, and you knew at that moment if that that movie was, was going to be interesting for you. For example, you you went to Blockbuster, you read that ten lines, uh, you said, okay, this is not for me. Oh, absolutely, this is for me. 
because for example if i take a brush of a, of a movie and i'm not into a theme and i haven't watched the the movie why not showing them in ten lines or have your i don't know you have to go to the castle you have to go to to get the princess out of the castle uh, you or you are with your friends and you have to kill the bad guys for example and then you see the you see the play field, you see the shots, and you say, okay, I have to look for this theme. You got to Google, oh, this theme is interesting. Oh, I have to look for for what's all about. And you get into the movie, you watch a movie, oh, the movies are interesting. Then you get into a theme, into the theme, into the theme, and then the the theme gets you back to, to the people. And you know, some kind of of relationship that is uh, it's awesome and it's really beautiful from, from my point of view. So, next one. So social media, shorts, interviews, podcasts, let's get along, we need each other. Okay, as I said before, we're in the digital era, okay? So we need love between social media and manufacturers, but sometimes this is some kind of double knife, right? Uh, I guess, as as Oscar said, this is being done uh, little by little, so why don't use uh, these, uh, these tools for our benefit, invitations to releases, as the manufacturers have been doing lately, visiting the headquarters, uh, showing them some, you know, uh, behind the scenes, something that no one is possible to, to see. And then all the creators are going to, to share their, their experiences in their own way, because some, some of them love to record very detailed, some of them just take some pictures for, for Instagram. And, and that's awesome because, as I said before in the first point, there are tons of people, different people that sometimes some of them got YouTube, some of them got Instagram, some of them love to see videos, some of them just prefer watching some detailed images. So why not use the, the social network? And let's try also to get different footage for, for each and try to get people ho hooked. I mean, for example, the ones that are watching Instagram, why not receiving uh, an exclusive video for Instagram? And then why not recording an exclusive video for, for YouTube? not sharing the same video on Instagram, same video on YouTube. Let's get it, you know, for example, in, in YouTube, you are, you're doing a white screen, okay? For example, in Instagram, you're, you're not using, you are in 4.3, and we're not getting done for a fit for, for that kind of, of social media. So let's get to, to the next one, as I'm getting to, to the end of my, of my part. And, this is launches during Pimo Expo. It's just the right time. So how cool is to enjoy a Pimo release in your flesh? Uh, do you remember, guys, last year when we were here and Elton John was released? We were, I was with, hanging out with my friends there in the, in the first floor, and then we received a, a notification in our mobile saying, okay, Elton John is out, the, the promo video is out. We all take the mobile phone, we shared a lot of uh, good times watching the watching the video. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at the tiny dancer. Oh, look at the lights. Oh, like we are living right now with with Metallica Master, okay? Uh, I think testing that is magic. The first game plays over the wall. You can share with your friends your the first opinions. Uh, why not? There are tons of, expo tons of expos, tons of events among the country. So the manufacturers can, you know, can choose which is the one that, that fits their, their needs. Why do you give them the chance to, to enjoy it? There are some people from all over the country that can go to the north, can go to the south, and why not letting uh, them enjoy uh, a Pimo a lounge in, in their friends, in their flesh, sorry. This is something that I've, I've lived uh, last year. I'm going to, to live it this year, and I would love to repeat this uh, again and again and again with with all my friends so for now this is this is the end of my part so i'm going to give all the control to to our captain here to to nick so let's go with your part man okay this is good this should take the day off all right talking about post launch so now the game's been released it's out and what do we expect what do we see um, we expect the machines to be ready to be shipped right away. Uh, we've seen in the past with some manufacturers that there was a big release. We were able to play the games here at Pinball Expo, other locations, and the machines were not ready to be shipped. We want them ready. We want them. We need them. So they need to get on it and have the machines ready. 
Um, another thing to be considered for us as end users, especially not living in the US, uh, one example is JAWS this year. JAWS was released in January. By the time the machines were out and we had them in Europe, which was basically end of March, almost beginning of April, I would say about a week after we got first games in in Europe, we basically already saw the next release. And that's a tough one for us um, because we don't really have time to enjoy the new title. We're just being hammered with, with titles as they come out. And um, yeah, we'd hope for a little more uh, time to enjoy what just has been released, especially being outside of the US. Um, if you talk about pricing, uh, people here in the US complain, I invite you to come over to Europe. Um, we'd be happy to have the prices we get here on new games. Uh, it's, it's gotten a little out of hand um, as of right now. I mean, if you're talking about a limited edition with Stern, for example, here it's 13 grand. Over there, with all in, we're at probably 16, 16 and a half thousand euros. If you transfer that into dollars, we're probably at about 17 and a half thousand dollars for the same machine. Um, so that's definitely something to be considered. Um, I know the distributors have their part in it, but um, yeah. That's, fortunately, this list is a little negative. It, it'll get better as we go. <laughs> uh, FOMO, fear of missing out. That can be good, definitely for the companies. Um, and that brings us to the next point, which is limited editions. Are they really limited? We're seeing a lot of limited editions, not just in numbers. So they have numbers between, they go up to over a 1,000. Um, versus we're bringing out another limited edition of the same game, another limited edition remake, remake. And even though it's the same game, maybe a little different, um, that kind of gets people angry, especially if they buy, if they think they're buying a limited edition and two years later they see the same game not being limited, readily available for anyone. So that that's a hard one. So our suggestion is keep limited games limited and um, don't just bring out more and more and more additions that basically decrease the value for everyone. It's a big investment. A lot of people work hard for their money. So if they invest, invest in one of these games, they want it to at least hold its value or somewhere stay in the ballpark. But if they just keep bringing out more and more games, all it does is decrease the value. Um, another thing that we want to talk about is code updates. Um, we're right now we're seeing kind of two approaches with the code updates, kind of like the Stern approach, which what we kind of dubbed it, uh, meaning basically that you start low with the codes and progress as you go. Um, or, for example, the uh, Jersey Jack uh, approach, which is basically to already have the code more or less finished. By the, by the time the game is released. Um, yeah, we asked ourselves, also here you could include people, the community, ahead of time in order to get a better code out from the release. Why not, you know, why if we pay so much money, why can't we have a more or less ready code once the game is released? I get that there are bug fixes and all that as we go, but um, yeah, so anyway, this is one approach. Um, we also thought about additional rules and assets. We saw, um, we see it sometimes like CERN, for example, has it with their toppers. If they put a topper on it, you connect it and it has the insider connected, you get more uh, modes and so on. Um, but we're also thinking like, especially for people that like to play the game more deeply, if there's maybe an option to perhaps even for, uh, for paying to get more options out of the game as you, you know, as you go along, so that's one connect, uh, one thought we put into it. Interconnectivity. Um, so far, we're only seeing one manufacturer that's doing it, and only with the new games. We love it. I mean, if you go out on the floor, everybody has their phone, especially in the right corner, is scanning. Um, some people love it because they can see how good they are. Other people love it to share with their friends. I love it because I see where I've been. I go all over the world. So cool. Hey, I was in Gerard, Ohio, playing Pastimes Arcade. Played at Stern, uh, Stern Factory. I mean, I think that's really cool to see it on my phone. So why aren't other companies doing this for us? 
And um, what was that? That's the time? <laughs> yeah, we're out of time. Sorry. Um, no, but seriously, uh, <laughs> other, other companies should be doing this. And the other question we have, I've been to one arcade where they did their own scoring boards. I mean, with the old games from the 60s, you had to go up and type in your scores. But is there a possibility, I'm talking about games from the 90s, uh, maybe even mid to late 80s, if we could do something like Insider Connected also for older games. I mean, this could also be an aftermarket company who does something, but we would love to see that uh, in our games. It's just, it brings the community together. As uh, Robert said, it's, um, it's basically our age now. You can either fight it or just go with the flow, and we think Stern is definitely on the right path with that. Yeah, technical support, that's a big one. Again, we're spending a lot of money and we expect good technical support. And this means technical videos and technical f support. Um, there should be a lot more of that. Right now, it's a lot do-it-yourself, go on internet forums. Um, some people post videos. We would love to see more of that coming from the companies. And uh, also, response time to inquiries. Tire, sometimes they don't even respond at all. And if they do, it takes months. I mean, I don't know how many emails I've written in the past for certain problems, and it took, took forever for them to respond, if even. And again, we're spending a lot of money, so that should be happening. Um, the same with availability of spare parts. Okay, it might be a different situation over here, but in Europe, it's definitely not so easy to get spare parts, um, also older games. That should be covered, and it should be taken care of for the future. Like, sometimes you have the feeling they bring out a new game. It's all about the new game, but, I mean, we have games from the 60s up and running, and they can still fix those. And the games we invest in now, we want running in decades from now. Hey, I want, might want to pass my game on to my kids, you know? I want it to be working. So that's something, a field they could definitely improve uh, from our opinion. Accessories are important. If you go down on the floor, you see, I would say at least half is stickers, flipper accessories, lighted signs, all of that. We want that more. We want that. That is cool. And, hey, if you look at the last one, all the merchandise. I mean, look at the people with all... Everybody here is wearing pinball t-shirts except me. Um, <laughs> that's what we want. Hey, free advertisement. That's cool. I mean, I would say it's a niche. Not a lot of... I get a... If, you know, if I... In, let's say out in the normal, normal world, if I talk about pinball, they're like, oh, that still exists? And, hey, that's free advertisement. So just bring it. Um, even with old broken parts, plastic parts, you can make keychains. I have flipper on my bag, flipper fingers, all that. So definitely more of that. Um, it definitely, the artwork, it complements, um, like the toppers, they complement the existing game, artwork, all the stuff that goes with it. I mean, most people, they have game room, um, put have all the, I don't know, I have some light swords hanging next to my Star Wars game. Um, definitely something we want more of, and they should just keep it coming. And last but not least, um, all I can say, post-launch is not the end of a game, it's the beginning of a game. So keep the fire going, that's what we're saying. You know, we thought it was amazing that years after they brought out Deadpool, they tr tried to, you know, re-up the theme and say thank you to the community for still playing the game, give out little goodies and stuff like that. Um, it's definitely not just about the machine. We're talking about a whole theme, and the theme will promote pinball. And pinball, in return, will promote a theme. So why not, you know... And that's what we we're just saying. A lot of the things were we thought about, they just did. For example, if I think of Metallica, the, f the remastered edition just a few days ago, um, when they uh, announced it, the announcement was by the band members. How cool is that? That's what we want to see. We saw Keanu Reeves um, at uh, Comic-Con in San Diego. That's amazing. That's exactly what we want. Why are there not more... Um, 
people that are part of the theme at Pinball Expo, um, people to talk to, people to touch, uh, just say, hey. Just earlier, I walked by Steve Ritchie. I tapped him on the shoulder. I was like, hey, can I take a picture? That's, that's exactly what we want. That's what the community wants. Um, so if you, if you launch a game or if there's a new movie, Deadpool, for example, part three, going along also with Wolverine and X-Men, why not at a movie launch have some pinball machines? You know, that's basically um, what we're hoping for. Or another thing, uh, this is uh, Big Lebowski has a white Russian in the under the glass. Well, there's also a white Russian above the glass. Uh, let me tell you, it tastes damn good. <laughs> and watching the movie, um, that's exactly what we want. We want this combination. It's not just about shooting the ball up and down the play field. It's, it's the whole theme. It's the music. It's the experience. It's the artwork. It's the whole feeling it creates. So they should work with it a little more and just give us a little more. And... Um, yeah, and you can also not just draw pinball enthusiasts, you will also draw people that love the movie. Oh, cool, Big Lebowski, I love that movie. Um, that's my theme, that's that's what I like. Oh, they make a pinball machine, oh, that's really cool, look at that shot, oh, the white Russian, the little details. Um, so again, that's how you can get the people. And um, yeah, also tournaments, if uh, think about that. Um, and all these events, not just for enthusiasts and pros, invite everybody, be open to everyone. That's kind of what we're saying. And um, traveling for pinball. I've seen a lot of people from Europe, Australia here at this event already. Um, and I can tell you, Americans, you're invited to come over to Europe. There's many, many, many cool locations. And um, you're always welcome. It's a great community. And um, yeah. That's another way to promote and, uh, yeah, basically promote the theme and the game. Thank you, Oscar. Well, this, I <laughs> so this is just a couple of suggestions that we thought about. I'm sure there could be ma many more, yeah. And uh, what we think is um, that this is good for the end user, but it obviously has to be good also for the companies. Is what we believe. Now we are not many people in the room, but does anybody? think or want to say something about something that we have missed any idea on maybe one suggestion more on how could we or they launch better a PMO machine does anyone have an idea something we have may have forgotten that is critical you, you don't have to I'm just putting the question in the room in case for final and then take it if you have questions or remarks or anything but you know when I ask the question does do you think that and many people raise their hand I'm sure you had in, you, in your head some examples on why they could improve. Maybe we've mentioned them. And as I said, many have been implemented, but not the proper way and not by everybody. So I don't know. Does anyone have a, any question, remark, or idea? Or we kind of... I, I, it's easy to figure a, uh, a band could have on their social media, they just released a pinball machine theme to us. But what about comic book themes? Like, have you seen anything where either Marvel or DC, the only ones that have licensed so far, does something on their side, mm -hmm. any kind of publicity from their side to mm -hmm. say, hey, there's a pinball machine that mm -hmm. we just licensed out? Definitely. Well, if go I, I, go ahead. Uh, it's interesting you say that. Is it me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting you say that. Um, I think you'd be surprised if you watch movies, any movies, uh, how often there's a pinball machine somewhere in the background. It's amazing. Um, I see it all the time. And so in that case, I mean, they could talk to them, and it, it'd be very easy to implement it even if it's in the comic. I mean, I think it's... it's and, and I think on top of that, that's a challenge too because we have examples where there's these two worlds, the pinball world and, and the licensed world, whatever they call it, and sometimes they were not coordinated and the other world was promoting or explaining or showing the, the pinball before th the company did. And the, you know, So it's doing that, very good idea, but when you do it again, the idea is what and the how you do it. So do it coordinated, Talk to them, what are you going to do on your side, what I'm going to do on my side, and we come together to a perfect launch on, on that sense, right? But, but good, very good point. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they did it with Godzilla. 
the first promo video was watching Toho Productions YouTube channel, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was with Toho. Yeah. So mm. it could be done, it could be mm. achieved. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's been done, yeah, yeah. But, but maybe more, yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Great. Um, I, I, <laughs> I was just going to mention that um, the next presentation is by a company called Scorebit that has written all of the software so that you can take all those old 70s or 80s, 90s games mm. and have basically Stern Insider. Cool. Yes, to totally. I mean, it may be the, exam the right example on that bullet point we had was probably less the score bit is itself because it's existing, is the fact, for example, that I own, for example, four Jersey Jacks, and they used to have score bit, and I was f fine with it because then you didn't have the scanning thing because it was the opposite. It was a QR code on the, on the machine, and you had your phone, and you could scan it from your phone, which I would say makes more sense because you have a phone, and you had the challenges and the achievements and the whole thing. From one day to the other, it was uninstalled on an update and no alternative to that. Not yesterday, like two years ago. What's going on? From a super company like Jersey Jack, is it because they are developing something else? I start to think they don't. They're not doing it. So we lost something. They, they took something from us, which is ununderstandable to, to me. You know, I don't. Th that's the example we really wanted to point out yeah, regarding Scorbit or something similar. If you don't have further questions or <laughs> remarks, I think the next one is just a big thank you to all of you for attending this seminar. I hope you liked it, and yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.